Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today we're going to take a look at the Paul Rubens watercolor set of 24. This has been requested by a lot of people and um, I was sent this set to review from the same people I bought this set from and uh, because I had purchased this and I tried it and I'd been seeing people review the Paul Rubens set. I'm like, my goodness, this seems to be so similar to the colors and the quality of the Paul Rubens paints that I wondered if they were the same. So I contacted that seller and asked them if they were the same paints and they replied to me on Amazon. They said they said they are the same paints with some differences. So I didn't exactly know what that meant because there was some language barrier. Um, they're from China and I'm here in the United States and um, you know, props to them for speaking English because I certainly don't speak um, any other language fluently. So um, they sent me this as well as a metallic set to review and um, this is part one. We're going to look at this set. The other set, the other review will be up on my channel shortly if you want to check that out. But I've had so many reviews for both of them that um, and I decided to do two separate videos. So if you're only interested in one, you could find it. And um, if you like both, then you could watch both, I guess. So the first thing that um, that is strikingly different from the other set is the packaging. These are, or the, by other set, I mean this set here, is the packaging. They come in a sturdy uh, chipboard box. And I think it's meant for you to keep. Um, it doesn't definitely doesn't feel like a disposable box or you can use it for storing something else, but I definitely would hang on to it. It would also be very nice to gift wrap if you were buying this as a present for somebody getting into watercolor or someone that just enjoys trying different watercolors. It would be very easy to wrap and it's just, or even just put a bow on it because it's so pretty. Um, and then inside the box, you have this gorgeous chamois. It's really soft. I think it's meant for wiping your brushes on it, but as I mentioned um, in the other video, I would... I wanted to show it to you first before I tried it out as a brush blotter because I don't want it to look all gross <laughs> when you guys see it. And then um, after that, you've got this gorgeous tin. And of course, if you don't like pink, then that's probably an issue <laughs> uh, because they didn't use a standard black. And then I just made this little swatch here because I like to have, I like to do all my swatches the same so I can compare apples to apples when I am comparing paints to others. And you've got two fold out trays. I guess I have used it because I always do a few projects. I, I use um, products a bit before I review them because I want to make sure that I'm giving a really fair uh, and honest review and that comes out very standard. Very sturdy and high quality. This is not flimsy. Um, so I definitely think they put a lot more money in the packaging of this than in the pretty excellent set which is also made by the same manufacturer. So when you get this you're also going to get a color chart uh, that you can fill in yourself, which is uh, on watercolor paper. So I did that, and I also did on my paper because I just wanted to have that kind of um, reference point. And they send a color swatch, which just kind of shows you all the colors in the um, in the line. And something that I noticed, because I was doing some just kind of Googling to see if there was any other information about this paint, and I came across a thread on Wet Paint, which is a forum for artists, uh, from like 2014, and they were talking about the Paul Rubens tubes um, that they had, I think they somebody had imported them from China, they were, uh, the pans were running about $2, the tubes were varied depending on what series they were in, uh, but people were interested in them. Um, they do not contain oxgall, so they will behave a lot like a Holbein paint, if you like the Holbein line of paints. Honestly, when I first got them and started swatching them out, they reminded me of the uh, Schminka paints that I have. I only have um, like 12 Schminka paints, the Hordam paints, but they reminded me an awful lot of that. Schminka paints do have oxgall in them, but I like the color vibrancy and just the way they spread out, they reminded me of that quite a bit. It's very vibrant colors. Um, the, uh, they kind of wear down a little quicker than I would have expected. You can see my ultramarine blue art. Well, maybe you can't see that, but it already has quite a, quite a dent in it. Um, I just posted this tutorial on my YouTube channel using these paints of, uh, oh, and this is their watercolor paper, the Paul Rubens watercolor block. They sent me as well to review. This is cotton paper. It's gorgeous paper. Um, so I recommend that as well. It's very much like Arches or a Hannah Mule. Um, it's got a very hard size to it and uh, I thought it worked really well. But that tutorial can be found on my channel. And I'll just show you some of the qualities. I, I thought it was interesting because instead of having a throwaway top sheet, they actually put a print of a um, the artist Zhao 
gang. I probably just butchered that. I'll show you the I'll show you the thing, the name right there. Uh, the picture daybreak. So I thought that was kind of nice. Instead of having a piece of paper you're gonna throw away, you actually have a print that you could either frame or tack up and enjoy. So that's kind of I think that they really do well at um, making sure their packaging is thoughtful and usable. And I mean, even with the pretty excellent paints, this is still a really adorable tin. And to be quite honest. The reason I bought it was because of the really adorable tin, because I knew I would use it for something else, even if the paint wasn't good, but I really like the paint. So, uh, so I just, I, I like it when brands put that kind of thought into things. I love the, um, the texture. I used some cerulean and ultramarine blue here, which are two granulating colors, and I got some gorgeous texture there. And uh, that also is helpful because the paper is so hard sized that it helps bring out those textures when you're using that. And I thought it was fun for the rocks. So, um, so yeah, their paper is excellent too. It's going to run you about the same as what an Arches block would run you on sale. I think that uh, that large 10 by 15 pad goes for around $30. So a 10 by 15 Arches, probably regular MSRP would be 60. Then you'd find it, you know, half off on some big art sites for, you know, around 30. So just to, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a good price. It's, it's priced well. And now these go for on Amazon, which is the cheapest place I saw them was $38. They have a regular retail price of, um, I'm thinking 45. And I think they would be an excellent gift. Again, you have the gorgeous packaging, which is nice for gifts, but I thought the quality was good. However, the quality was really good in the cheapo $20 set of 36 paints as well. So you've got to kind of ask yourself, are you buying this for a large variety of beautiful colors or are you buying it for gorgeous packaging and you just want more information about your paint? So here's where I think the, um, where the seller had told me they're the same but different comes into play. Uh, I'm going to show you the side-by-side -side swatches that I did on my watercolor paper. This is, I used the Waffle Flower stamps to, to swatch these out. I will link those below as well. This is the Paul Rubin set. I'm actually going to just write that really quick. Just so I don't get them mixed up. Obviously, there's only 24 here and this 36 here. They also sell a set of 12, which is about $20, I believe. Um, and this is $20, so seriously, for you get three times the paint for the same price on the pretty excellent. And I'll link all the stuff down below. So this is the cheapos. Um, comparing colors, now they do have different color names when I was looking at the back of the pretty excellent box and the colors here. Uh, however, I think that, uh, that they're pretty darn similar. I think there may be some hues, and I think that maybe some of the, these probably have more dyes and optical brighteners, um, and that maybe keeps the cost down, but my gosh, looking at the texture of the pans, looking at how they paint out, they seem the same to me. Um, and I, I bet there's a different assortment of colors in the, the different sets, like this one is matter red, and I think that one is like a, uh, a crimson lake. So, I think quality a lot quality wise they're very much the same, but I think they may be using better pigments in the Paul Rubens line. Uh, but they are just they're both just really excellent. Like you can see that cad red and Paul Rubens is so opaque. It um I believe that uses an actual cad red pigment. Oh my gosh, PR108. Um and there's no pigment information on the pretty excellent paints. And you can see how opaque that is, and cadmium is a very opaque pigment and it's less opaque in the pretty excellent um the pretty excellent line and like there's an actual cerulean blue here they don't call it cerulean blue they have a cerulean hue in the um in the pretty excellent line but the cerulean here which is called sky blue it actually used pb36 which is a cerulean blue color and it granulates and is gorgeous um so you know i just think there is some some probably changes, but look at the Prussian blue, look at the cobalt blue. Even the cobalt blue was a little shrunken in the pretty excellent paints, and it also shrunk from the sides a little bit. I mean, on the, it shrunk from the sides in both. Like, it shrunk from the sides a little bit in the pretty excellent, and it shrunk from the sides a little bit in the, um, in the Paul Rubens. Now, the pans that these are in are thick-walled, very sturdy, they don't rattle around in the tin, they, it just feels like luxury, which is, you know, why I think it has a higher price point. I do think that they're using probably like the higher series colors in the 24 Paul Rubin set, but then of course you get individual pans instead of one just thin, cheaply molded um, plastic, and I'll show you here. You know, it's just kind of like a thin plastic that all of these are in. But look at that, the paint goes, I don't know if I can pop that out. I can kind of push it a little bit on the bottom, but there's as much paint in either. So, you know, you can let your budget decide. I would think if you're buying this for like, um, 
maybe a child that's getting into watercolor, I'd probably go with this, just, and not young child because I have no idea about toxicity information, and I wouldn't necessarily trust toxicity information. You gotta know if your kid's gonna eat paint or not, if you're gonna get them, you know, decent watercolors. Um, I'd probably go with this for a kid just because they're gonna use up so much more, with so much more gusto than an adult, and I'd probably go with this for an adult. Um, again, you'd have to take the colors in consideration. Are they gonna want to paint with a teal or pink palette? I sure, I sure love it, but I'm not everybody. Um, so, I mean, just looking at the colors, like the yellow ochres and the burnt siennas, I mean, they're, they're very, 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 very comparable. I mean, like this this kind of sap greeny color here in Paul Rubens is much is a little bit more vibrant than the versions in the pretty excellent set. But I, I find that the, I think they might have used a different a different range of colors. I mean, some of them are the same, but you know there are different ones. There's a weird color here, and I'm wondering if I might have got the wrong. They might have put the wrong pan in. This said PV23 um, permanent violet, but. That should be kind of like a dioxazine color, I believe, and that looks really like almost like a like a car, like a burnt, um, I, like a like a perylene maroon or something. It's just very not violet to me. It's just very dark, um, and here you can see it. Again, I like to save the wrappers. These all come individually wrapped. So again, it's very gifty because somebody gets the pan. If you give this to somebody as a gift, then they unwrap all the little pans. It's kind of like a, a very experiential um, art gift and that's what I would probably recommend this for the most. Um, I stuck down all my wrappers onto a piece of watercolor paper and swatched them. I did a basic swatch and then I did a glaze just to see like how well they glazed. They glazed pretty well without lifting I have to say. I only did one glaze. Um, but yeah I mean it's not as smooth but this is a heavily sized paper um, so I think that might be why I'm not getting the smoothest of glazes on top. But I thought the colors were nice and vibrant, and all of the colors contain pigment information, and the pigments are your customary pigments. So, um, you know, so that's good. I like I, I look at the cerulean though. I have to say, I feel like there might be something added to that because it doesn't, to me, look like um, look like a clean cerulean. It looks like it might have some uh, some filler in it. But other than that, everything looked pretty good. And, uh, and pretty customary as far as the pigments used and the colors. Uh, most of the, let's see, uh, I would say, I think, all until you get, like this, this is all single pigments. Um, and then as I look through here, the, the, these, that's a single, that's PG-17. That's kind of an odd one. You only see that in um, paints made overseas usually. Uh, White Knights makes that one too, called Russian Green, I believe. They call it a hooker's green uh, uh, something. I can't, the print is so small. Um, and then you got your thalo green here. They call it emerald green deep. And then yellow ochre, that's a single. Um, yeah, it's great if you can read the, if you, you might not be able to read them. That's the only thing. Uh, that's a single pigment. That's a single pigment. That's a single pigment. That's a single pigment. So most of these are single pigments in this Paul Rubin set, and you just don't know what you're getting in the pretty excellent set. So they may have some fillers to keep costs down. Um, but you honestly, the, for bang for your buck, man, that you really just can't beat that. It's it's great bang for your buck. Now they both of those came with a little swatch card. Um, let's see, do I have the pretty excellent swatch card up here? I think I do. Yes, right here. And so you can really see the the uh, the similarities. I love that they do a watercolor swatch card and I also like to compare my swatches just to make sure that I am comparing apples to apples in different things and um, so you can see how so many of the colors have direct relatives um, between the lines. So I would really say you can't go wrong with each. This is more expensive, but I think what you're paying for is the packaging because you have the all you have 24 individual half pans, you've got the metal tin, those alone would probably run, you know, twenty dollars. So that would that's in the chamois. That's gonna add twenty dollars to the price tag anyway. So it just depends on if you're putting your money into a luxurious gift or these reusable elements, which are nice to have, or if you just want to put your money into the paint and take a chance not knowing exactly what the pigments are. Um, quality of painting and enjoyment of painting wise, I think they're gonna be exactly the same. And I thought it would be also fun just to maybe do two side by side um, paintings using both. So hopefully we can just kind of compare and decide, okay, uh, how different are they really? Now the color names are a little different, so I'm just going to be going by eye. 
but I'm going to put both of my swatches out that I made just so I can see exactly what I have here. I think because I want to just do something quick and easy that I'm used to painting, I'm going to paint a couple poppies. And this is going to be very loose and abstract. I just want to kind of get a feel for the paint. I'm going to start by, um, I think I'm just going to start by wetting, wetting an area for each flower. This is going to be very abstract. I just want to see how the paint flows and, and how they compare. Okay, so I need to pick a red. Um, I love this Matter Lake in the, in the, um, in the Paul Rubens, and it's very similar to that crimson there. So I've got this one, and I've got that one. So we will do the Paul Rubens on this side, and the Pretty Excellent on that side. Let's do Pretty Excellent first. I did not pre-wet this palette. And I do not know about the ox gall in this. I just that's what I found out on the wet paint site. We'll get that color there. Clean my brush so I don't have any residue, and we'll pick up some of the crimson over here. Seems very comparable so far. Did I redip? I'm trying to think. Did I redip my brush? I don't. I'm trying to keep this as. Okay, I'm gonna go in one more time. I'm trying to keep this as scientific as I can because it can be very difficult because since reviews deal so much with opinions it can be tricky to be completely fair. Now I want to put some yellow in the middle so let's see what do I have that are similar yellows I really like that yellow let's see if I have something like that mm, the yellows are richer in the Paul Rubin set so I don't have anything like that kind of cadmium yellow so I think I'll use the lemony color here so that would be that one right there so we'll add that to the center. And this isn't like, this is not a tutorial video, this is a review. I just want to try to get apples to apples here. Jeez, those both look pretty darn close. And remember, I dipped twice in the red there on the Paul Rubens. I should dip it, maybe I'll dip another time in the red here, because I, now I don't feel like that's fair. There. There we go. Now let's do a green. Let's see. I love the sap green here in the Paul Rubens. Let's see. What do we have that's closest? That one there on the end looks really close on the Pretty Excellent. Right here. Again, didn't pre-wet anything. I should probably count how many times I wiggle this in the, in the uh, paint. Oh, that's a gorgeous color. And maybe we'll add a little bit of one of the blues to it. Let's add a Let's add Prussian blue because I know I have Prussian blue in both. That's a third one, third one in there. I think these probably don't have oxgall either. So the Paul Rubens with no oxgall that would be appropriate for um, uh, for vegetarians that want to avoid animal products in all of their life, not just their uh, their diet. I use paints with oxgall. My my diet's plant based, but the and I avoid um, fur brushes, but. I don't, uh, I don't keep my paints oxgall free. Uh, so we'll do that same green for the stem. We'll do, did I read dip? I don't know if I wiggled my brush in this as much. I am, I would be a horrible scientist. Okay, look at that. Honestly, I like the green in that better. I thought this one was more vibrant. Maybe it is, but I like how that worked better. And then I picked up did I rinse my brush before I picked up the green? I can't remember. This is horrible. All right, so pick it up the Prussian blue. And adding that in there. I almost think that that paint is a little bit brighter, but okay, people. Seriously? Looks the same. Looks the same to me. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. So my bottom line review of this product would be that it's gorgeous. 24 artist grade colors for... $49 or yeah, for 30, no, no, $38. These are 38. The glitter ones are 49. So 24 colors, $38 using tried and true pigments. Um, I think it's a great deal. I really, th this would be, I think a great gift to buy somebody because you just take it out of the box and you feel like, oh my gosh, did somebody spend like $200 on me? Cause this feels gorgeous, right? That's what it feels like. Cause it's just so substantial feeling. Um, and I just love the fact that they wrapped it up in the cloth so it wouldn't get scratched because I have, I'll see if I can find my Sennelier paint set. It should be right under here. That sucker is scratched like crazy <laughs> here. This, you know, cause, and maybe that's why they didn't use black because black ones do get scratched up. But I mean, it feels, it almost feels, it feels definitely as substantial as this expensive Sennelier tin. 
and maybe even more so. I don't know. It just, I don't know. It just feels like luxury. And, um, you know, it, I'm sure it's, it's pink to, you know, appeal more to, um, to women and crafters. And why do I think that cheap paints are actually prettier here? That's, <laughs> Um, but I would definitely say, yeah, get this for a gift, um, or a gift for yourself. It is way more affordable than, say, like a Winsor & Newton or a Sennelier, which would run you, um, uh, starting $114 for a Winsor & Newton one this size and up. Uh, this is like a third of the price. But then again, if you just are concerned with the paint and you want your best bang for your painting buck, I personally can't tell the difference between the Paul Rubens paint and the pretty excellent paint. And this is 20 bucks. You get 36 colors versus $38 for 24 colors, or um, I think it's like $20 or for 12 colors in the Paul Rubens. So it just depends on what your needs are. Do you want a, um, do you want the better packaging because you know you want to use them up and you want to refill from tubes and you don't want to deal with this thinner um, packaging here, or would you rather have more colors? And I really think this tin is cute too. You can always put half pans in here. It's, you know, I, I really don't think you can go wrong with either, but I just wanted to make sure I compared both of these because they are so similar and I want to make sure that you have all the facts before you go and buy. I really can't tell the difference. I think that they're probably the same thing, just they probably use this like the series one, uh, the series four and five colors in this and these are all like series one colors, the less expensive colors. But either way, they get my approval. I still think they're a good value in either event. I love the Paul Rubens watercolor paper. And uh, yeah, thumbs up for me if you want to give them a try. I really don't see any downsides. Um, this, I think, is definitely the steal of the year. <laughs> but I've talked about that before. You've heard me my excitement over this watercolor palette. Um, if you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. As this is drying, I've got to show you this again. These are the cheapies. I think the cheapies are prettier. What do you think? I really think the cheapies are prettier. I think the colors are nicer. From those, from that selection, I tried to go closest ones. I feel, but that could be that they're using dyes and optical brighteners, guys, so I don't want to, like, mislead you, but I definitely feel like those colors are more vibrant and transparent, which could, probably does mean they have dyes in them rather than tried and true pigments. Um, but, you know, if you are making cards and you are, you know, you want the watercolors for coloring stamped images, you're not worried. They do have LightFast ratings on the cheaper ones, too, so, gee, I don't know if that would really dissuade me from using them in a painting, um, personally decisions decisions so i would actually i would think either of these would be a great gift this one would be more of the luxury gift this would be more of the kind of practical gift or gift for somebody just getting started either way you can't go wrong i think i like the cheaper ones better i like that packaging better but i, think I actually like this paint better but that said i really think they're both very much the same so get what you want or don't get any of it. I don't want to pressure you. Please don't think I'm trying to pressure you into buying more palettes because I am a terrible, terrible, terrible influence. And uh, yeah, we'll leave on that note. Thank you so much for watching. If you're curious about the metallic version, this is some samples from the metallic version. You can check out that review as well. These are a lot of fun. It's all a lot of fun. I've got a problem. Okay, that's it. Thanks for watching. Until next time, happy crafting. And don't forget to check out part two with the glitter paints. Bye.